Hello everyone, this is Ben again and uh, today we're looking at a task one table which you can see here. The chart below is really a table, let me change that. The table below shows information about student enrollments at three different English language schools for the year 2017. And we're supposed to summarize the information, which is not too hard because unlike some tables, there's not too much data to look at. Or sorry, I should say there aren't too many data because data is actually an irregular plural now. But there isn't too much information to look at. We've got to select and report the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So comparing um, enrollment figures for three different language schools. So for the people watching this video, many of you will study at uh, English language schools to help prepare you for the IELTS exam or just to learn English in general. We're talking about those kinds of places. So as always, I'm looking at a real answer from one of my real life students. I want you to think about what score it would get and see how close it is to the score that I would uh, be thinking of giving it. I always recommend at this part of the video that you pause the video and just read it on your own. But I will also read it very briefly to, uh, to help you. So first slide, second slide, third and last slide. When choosing a possible score, I use the band descriptors public version for task one. They are available from the IELTS British Council website. Public means for everyone. Yeah, as I always say, surprisingly many students uh, don't seem to know about their existence. But obviously when you're scoring or trying to give an appropriate score, you have to think very carefully about why it's getting that score. And that's what this is for. What would I give this? Overall, I gave 5.5. Grammar, 5. Vocabulary, 6. Cohesion and coherence, 6. Task achievement, 6. But for individual parts, you don't round up. So if this was 7, for example, it would be 6 overall. If grammar or six, and this was six, it would be six overall. But because I gave grammar five this individual part, it would be 5.5. That seems mean, but I don't make the rules. But if it makes you feel any better, um, let's say for task one, you get uh, 5.5 and task two, is given as a uh, six, it would be kind of rounded up to six. But that's a bit misleading because remember that task two is worth twice as many marks as uh, task one. That's why they say for task two, you should spend 40 minutes on it and task one, no more than 20 minutes. Slightly mess, less uh, misleading speaking, writing, listening, reading. Let's say you get 5.5 for two and six for the other two. You'll get six overall. So it's rounded up sometimes, but it's not for this individual part. So 5.56, uh, excuse me, 5.5, and I gave it five. Six, six, six. Okay, so let's take a look. So the given chart, well, it's a table. But if the student found the question online where the wrong word was given, can't blame them for using the wrong word, really. The given table 
represents how the number of students enrolling at, well, yes, but it doesn't explain that there are three language schools, which it should. Uh, because the way I always think about it is you should be able to not have the table or the other infographic like the bar chart. You should be able to read the answer and be able to draw the table yourself. And here, it's important that the schools, I would draw that or type it uh, in the table if I drew it. So, yeah. Uh, three language schools, namely, specifically. Three English schools, namely those ones, specifically those three, altered during the period of 2017. 2017, not really a period, it's just a year. Altered during the year of 2017. Or the year 2017, or just altered simply during 2017. Or in 2017. Um, I'm going to be a bit fancy here, because the hardest part of this, as I'm sure you've seen, is it's every two months... I'm going to say the bi-monthly number. Bi-monthly is one of those weird words that has two different meanings. It can mean twice a month or it can mean every two months. Clearly here, I'm using it to mean every two months. So I just want to show off to the examiner, say, hey, look at me. Uh, I'm, you know, an educated native speaker who knows some fancy words, who has a good vocabulary, um, a wide vocabulary, and I just want to I wanna show off. And that could be the difference between, you know, an 8 and a 9, because 9 is supposed to be um, the level of an educated native speaker, you know, one who can do well at university. Um, overall, it's clearly seen that the amount of students... Amount is for uncountable nouns. Student is obviously countable. One student, two students. So the number, the number of students who enrolled at the New Zealand one and MSC showed an upward trend. While there was a decrease in the number of BCEA students during the given period. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, I got number already, so I don't want to reuse that. I can't use amount, as I said. So I'm going to say the figure 4. Why is it 4 and not of? Well, we said the amount of time, the number of students, but 4 here just means representing, like the figure given 4. It's a little bit hard to explain. But we don't say the figure of. We can say the number of some countable noun, the amount of some uncountable one, amount of quantity or volume or something for uncountable ones. But we say the figure for. Um, and that's looking pretty good now, I think. In detail, I can't say that I like that too much. We can discuss something in detail, for example. But I don't just say in detail as a kind of lead-in. I'm going to say examining the table in more detail. I'm going to say closer detail. In close detail is uh, studying carefully, it means. Again, I'm just going to show off to the examiner. That I'm native, I understand that close detail is a common collocation. Examining the table in closer detail. I'm going to add some more. It is evident that it is clear that it can be seen, that it can be observed, that one can observe that. 
it is evident that 398 students attended, we don't say attend to, well, you can say attend to, but it has a, a very different meaning. Attend to is help someone. Uh, a customer has just come into the shop whom I need to attend to. Uh, so just attend is go to as a school. So 398 students attended BCAE, which was the highest, I'm gonna put a comma there, which was the highest, the highest what? We didn't say number or figure before, so I'm gonna say it now, which was the highest figure? Well, just above a quarter of that, what's that, that number, that figure, just above a quarter of that number enrolled at MSC at the beginning of the year. Yeah, at the beginning of the year, well, again, maybe be a bit more specific, but it, it's okay. I said bi-monthly at the start, so it's close enough. The number of students who went to NZCL was at, well, it was or a bit fancier, so the one I'm gonna use stood at. I like to be fancy. We can say stand at when we give a specific figure at a specific time. So stood at 314 in January to February. I could argue that the meaning could be clearer. Um, is it really attend, is it really go to, or is it register for? Um, you know, is it possible that a student can pay for four months so uh, they pay f at the start of March for the next four months so student enrollments um, we can probably guess that for these three schools, this is just the way they want to check how well their business is doing, how many students kind of um, joined, paid to study or registered for classes in two month periods. That's just how they choose to do it. But is attending and enrolling the same? Not necessarily. I'm being very picky here, but just be aware of the fact that you have to be as precise as possible. For example, instead of enrolled at, I could say something like uh, registered for classes. Um, it might be a good alternative. Anyway, let's get back to this. Since then, well, since then means until now, which is... Uh, at the time of speaking, November 2022, but this is just showing past data. So it's not really the correct language. I'm gonna say thereafter, just after that, you know, for the remainder of the period to thereafter, more and more students enrolled at MSC and it showed a notable increase. Well, the school didn't show an increase. It's always the number or amount of figure that shows an increase. If you're talking about the school, I always think it's better to say saw an increase. Either the school or the number saw an increase. You know, they, they witnessed that happen. They saw that happen. But showed... Um, the trend that's being shown is the changing uh, number or amount, isn't it? So the figure showed a notable increase until the final year. See, this is just uh, unfortunate. There's a lot of good things in this essay, but there aren't different years. There's one year, 2017, the final two-month period we're talking about. And it's not where, it's when we're talking about time where would be like country or, or which school or something. So the final two month period when it reached almost 500. Yeah, reached is an okay word because it's, uh, it's uh, going up. 
If it's going down, I wouldn't say reach, just like uh, we usually reach up. We don't reach down. If we uh, need to get something from a shelf, like a book from a bookshelf, we reach up. If it goes down, fell to. So here, reached is a good word. I like that. Turning to the figure, well, we talked about that, the figure 4 BCEA. Uh, nice transition, though, turning to. But when we say um, turning to or moving on to, we don't usually use the same subject. We usually change it. So turning to the figure for uh, BCAA, there was a rise of. Um, but that's not the most pressing, the most urgent issue here, which is that I don't know the time period when it rose. So even though I don't like the subjects being the same, I'm going to leave it because the main issue we don't have time. So it started at, in the first two months, it started at just under 400. And it rose by approximately 100 in the subsequent month. Well, it's two months. So the subsequent, uh, let's say, session is um, kind of a period of, uh, of classes in this case. Am I right? So it would be from 400 to 500 if it rises by 100. I'll just check that. Got it right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does go up by about 100, just under. After experiencing a dramatic growth, the number started. So that's nice, isn't it? A long, complex sentence. After this happens... After this happening, then this happens. So after ex experiencing a dramatic growth, the number started to reduce gradually. Um, I think decline, drop is better than reducer. To reduce gradually, and in November and December, only half of the starting number was left at the school. Yeah, if you say left at the school, it's talking about the students who were there, but... As we said, uh, the number of enrollments is not necessarily the same as the number of students. Enrollments is just people paying to register. Again, it's a, it's a small difference, but um, just be aware of it. You have to be as exact as possible. In terms of is meant, but in terms of isn't right. Uh, in terms of is when you're specifying something, um, kind of narrowing down. Uh, let me give you an example. So, regular exercise has many benefits in terms of physical health and mental health. So, benefits, good things, but I want to be more specific, so I'm getting narrower. Physical health or mental health or something like that. So, we shouldn't really use it here. I'm going to change it to uh, in the case of. Maybe I wouldn't use turning to in the case of personally, but they're, they're fine. It's just not my particular writing style. But if you use them, try to use them uh, accurately in terms of is not right for here. So in the case of NZCL, the figure peaked in August. Again, August is a time when not there was, but there were enrollments as countable. There were roughly 700 students enrolled. I could say enrollments as a noun, but we've used the word too much already, I think. Um, so students being enrolled Enrolled 1L or 2, it, it could uh, depend on the country, I think. Like, travelled is uh, kind of 1L in the US and uh, 2 in the UK. After that, it's not wrong, but it's not very formal either. So let's upgrade the language. Subsequently, there was a mere drop. Mere isn't the right word. You can say dropped merely by 2, for example. There was a slight 
drop or a minor drop to 496 students at the end of the period. Well, again, in the final two months might be better. So this is what I gave. I felt a bit bad um, because there was so much good stuff there and there were a few easy fixes to get it up to a higher score. But I tried to be as objective as possible with the scoring just by gonna go back just by following the the band descriptors so let's take a look so first of all task achievement so task achievement addresses the requirements of the task number five generally addresses the task The format may be appropriate in places. Um, yeah, I mean, as for the format, um, yeah, I felt that um, it was a bit damaged by confusing number and amount and making kind of weird mistakes like um, using year incorrectly um where was it until the final year it's here isn't it final year it should have been two month period it's just silly silly mistakes that um really damage the kind of overall achievement in the task I also felt that there kind of was a relatively clear overview, but it was a bit, um, I, I suppose, kind of, um, let me choose my words carefully. Uh, it was a bit mechanical with the detail recounted. Um, there was some really good grammar. Um, there was some very, very nice words, good vocabulary. But I do feel that um, general trends could have been talked about a bit more broadly and maybe a few more comparisons could have been made between them. So what I mean is, instead of just saying that the figure for the first one went up and then went down, which is very true, how do the figures compare to uh, the other schools over time? If you think about it, the schools, they all offer English classes. So they are potentially competitors so competitors, you do want to compare how well they're doing to each other. Possibly I'm being uh, a little bit mean there. It could maybe be six, but I'm, I'm going to stick to five. I'm not going to change my mind. Coherence and cohesion, I did give six. Arranges information and ideas coherently, clear overall progression. Yeah, I think so. Cohesive devices effectively. Well, there were good transitions between paragraphs, for example, like I said. Um, it could have used more pronouns and things like that. Like instead of saying the number, the number, the number, the amount, the amount. Obviously, amount was used incorrectly. Just say the number of A was dramatically higher than that of B or the one for B during the period. These kinds of cohesive devices, uh, they make it much easier for the reader to, uh, to read the essay. Sorry, highlight is better for this. And 
Ireland's vocabulary. Um, it was unfortunate to make the silly mistakes like confusing number and amount um, and saying year instead of two month period. Um, but overall, it was adequate, I think. And there was uh, an attempt to use some less common vocabulary rose by approximately 100 in the subsequent uh, month. Silly mistake, it wasn't month, it was two month period. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It rose by approximately 100 in the subsequent month. Month is wrong, uh, but still, subsequent is a good word. Uh, rose by approximately is a good word. I felt that uh, vocabulary use was generally quite good. Um, you know, just above a quarter. And uh, reached almost 500. Um, I like this just above a quarter because it, it kind of is a comparison. But um, it's not something that is really repeated much in terms of drawing comparisons between the figures for the different schools. But um, that's the kind of stuff I would like to see more of. I think may, maybe this would be six, but I'm going to be a bit mean. And uh, grammar. Mix of simple and complex forms. Mix some errors in grammar and punctuation, but they rarely reduce communication. Yeah, I think uh, overall the grammar was very good. Confusing where and when, for example, did reduce the communication, but only, only rarely. Had kind of a nice flow. It's, it's a bit difficult to deal with this kind of essay because it's very silly mistakes, as I've said. So I'm trying to give a kind of overall view. I think arguably, maybe you could say grammar could be six, task achievement could be five. But um, my overall feeling was it would be 5.5 .5 and a few very easy fixes would get it to six or 6.5. It wouldn't need to change much because there's a lot of good stuff in it. Anyway, I hope that's, uh, that's kind of made it a little bit clearer. Of course, um, with the assessment. I'm just using my best judgment. But uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask them uh, by commenting under the video. And as always, thank you for watching and listening. That's all from me. Goodbye.